Hi there. Thank you so much for joining me today. This is Julie DiMatteo from thepaperpixie.com. I'm a Stampin' Up! independent demonstrator in the US. And in this video tutorial, I'm going to show you how to make this gift card holder, which is actually a double slider gift card holder. Let me see if I can get that all the way in the view here. How awesome is that? I love these. I did a project similar to this about three years ago to hold a Ghirardelli square. And this one is not as three dimensional as that one, but it is just so cool nonetheless. Perfect for some last minute gift giving needs this holiday season, but it can so easily be adapted for birthdays or teacher appreciation, you name it. This is featuring the warm and toasty stamp set. I just love this little reindeer with his red bow. And I'm gonna show you how easy this is to make. We've got a lot of layers on this card, so I'm gonna make sure that all the measurements are up on the screen. They'll also be included in my detailed blog post, which I'll have linked down below. We're gonna start with real red cardstock that measures three and three quarters by seven and three quarters. And with the simply scored along the seven and three quarter inch side, we're gonna score this at three eighths of an inch, two and seven eighths, and five and three eighths. I'm gonna come in and fold and burnish on all three score lines. Then I think you'll notice this last section here is just slightly smaller than the two other sections. That's just so that this edge does not get in our way. So we're gonna make a couple of tick marks on this last section here. I'm gonna bring a ruler in and I'm gonna make a tick mark at one and a quarter from the folded edge. So just a tiny tick mark that's really just marking the middle point of what would normally be a two and a half inch section. I'm gonna rotate it and do the same thing, the little tick mark, okay? So we've made those tick marks there. That's just gonna help let me know where to center our punch. I'm gonna use the essential tag punch for this because we're actually gonna also use it for our stamped panel as well. But there are a couple of other punches that you can use to give you that flat edge here. The jar punch would work. The tailored tag punch would work. And then I think you can get the Label Me Lovely punch to work as well. I'm gonna show you what we need to do. I'm gonna bring the punch in. I'm only gonna go in about an eighth of an inch and I'm just trying to center that little tick mark that I made with my pen there and punch. This is gonna create a little channel here for our slider mechanism. I'm gonna turn it around and do the same thing on the opposite side. Again, centering that little tick mark, going in about an eighth of an inch and punching. So that's what it looks like with the essential tag punch. And I think those other punches would work as well. Okay, now for the fun part, I've got a gallon Ziploc bag. Ask me why I'm using a gallon. If you watched my live video this week, I used a quart bag and the seam on the edge really got me into trouble. So I'm gonna use a gallon bag here and I'm gonna cut a 7 8 inch strip right off the bottom of this bag. Now you do want to make sure that you've already cut off the bottom seam so the bottom of your bag is open. And I'm going to come in and cut about a 7 8 inch strip. This is going to cut really easy on the paper trimmer. So we've got something that looks like that. Okay. Now I'm going to come in with a pair of paper snips and just cut off that seam on the edge. I'm going to do it from both sides and we're going to end up with two pieces. Save one piece for your next one. And then we've got this piece here that's 7 eighths of an inch wide. That is then gonna fit here in that channel that we made with the essential tag punch. Now I've got my 3 eighths of an inch side here on the left, and I've got my punch side here on the right. I'm gonna come in with a piece of tear and tape and run that right along the top edge of this plastic bag piece. Okay, so I've got that edge here. I'm gonna put that right up to that divot. I'm gonna wrap this down and around like so, and then we're gonna adhere it down like this. So let's go ahead and pull the backing off. And I've got it pulled tight, but not too tight, because you do want a little bit of wiggle room here, like so. And then we're gonna come in and cut off the excess plastic bag, just like that. And I think you'll see this is gonna slide like that. That's our sliding mechanism. A Ziploc bag, who'd have thunk? You can also use a cello bag or a grocery bag, some type of plastic, and that's gonna slide really easily there. Okay, again, I got my 3 8 of an inch side here on the left. That piece of tear and tape is right up there at the top edge. I'm gonna come in and place one more piece of tear and tape right over top of that. 
I'm only putting the tear and tape on the plastic bag. I don't want it to touch the cardstock. Okay. Then I'm going to flip the cardstock and place tear and tape at the top here. So it's sort of opposite sides. Like so. Okay. So we've got our seam here. I got another piece of tear and tape over the top. I flipped it and I put tear and tape here. So you can see there's tear and tape here and tear and tape there. Okay, let's put this aside. Let's work on our sliding panels. For that, I have two pieces of real red. This piece measures two and a quarter by four and a quarter, and this piece measures two and a quarter by three and a half. The longer piece, I'm gonna bring in the fancy tag topper punch, and we are gonna punch one end of it. Now, the inside width of this is two and a quarter inches, so the same width of this cardstock but you're gonna to need to feed it through the channel sort of at an angle. So just gently kind of put it through there. This is wider than the two inch channel of the punch. Flip it over and then just make sure that you've got those edges centered. It's gonna be just the same width of the punch there and go ahead and punch. Now, if you happen to have any extra paper pieces that are sticking out, just come in and trim that with your paper snips. So here's one panel. Here's the other. For this one, I'm gonna adhere a piece of Whisper White that measures two and one eighth by three and three eighths, and that's gonna layer just over the top of the smaller panel. And I'll do that with liquid glue. Now on this piece, I wanna stamp the sentiment on the bottom. So let's do all of our stamping at once. I'm gonna bring in another panel of Whisper White. This piece measures one and nine sixteenths by two and 13 sixteenths. That's one sixteenth past one and a half and one sixteenth past two and three quarters. We will be using the warm and toasty stamp set. I love this set for the holidays and for winter. We're gonna use this really adorable reindeer and the sentiment sharing Christmas cheer. I'm using Memento Tuxedo Black ink because we will ultimately be using Stampin' Blends on the reindeer. So first I'm gonna stamp the sentiment towards the bottom of the panel like so. Then let me get the reindeer inked up. You want to make sure that his nose is good and inked up so you get a good solid image. There we go. And while he's drying, I'm going to bring back the essential tag punch and I'm going to feed that right back into the punch to give us those great tag corners. Lining that up right to the top and punching. Do the same thing on the opposite side. And this is a great way to get so much more out of that punch by just cutting the width to one and nine sixteenths and then you can make it any height you want. Okay, so let's do a little bit of coloring. All right, here are the Stampin' Blends we're using. We're using the Light and Dark Soft Suede, the Dark Basic Black, and the Dark Real Red. I'm gonna start with the Basic Black and we're just gonna color in his hooves. Then I'm going to come in with the light soft suede and color the insides of his ears and his antlers. Then with the dark soft suede, we'll color the rest of his body. And then with the dark real red, we'll color in his beautiful bow. So very cute. I'm bringing in this white ribbon from the Flowers for Every Season Ribbon Combo Pack, and I'm going to cut a six inch piece of ribbon. This will be our ribbon pull for our double slider gift card holder. For this, I'm going to feed one end through the back of that tag topper. Then I'll bring the other end up around the front and then bring it to the back. And then I'm going to feed that back through. I'm going to turn it over and I'm going to feed that back up through that loop we made. I call this the Vera Bradley ribbon pull and I'm just going to pull that tight. And what that does is it gives you a really nice finish on the front and a really nice finish on the back. I'm going to come in with a pair of ribbon scissors and just cut those ends at an angle. And then we've got a beautiful ribbon pull here. Now to adhere the gift card to this panel, you can either use a pair of glue dots or the Stampin' Seal Plus. And I'm just gonna run a little bit of a strip here and then we'll center that gift card. 
like so. Now we are ready. Now bringing in this larger piece, I'm gonna grab tear and tape and run that right along our 3 8 of an inch edge here. So that's ready to go. Okay, so I recommend that we kind of dry fit this so you can see how it's gonna fold together and then we can determine how we're going to place our pieces. So this is gonna fold down and then down again. Okay, so we're gonna have our seam at the bottom and we're gonna start by taking our piece with the gift card and we're gonna adhere it to this panel. Then we're gonna flip this down and this piece actually needs to go face down but you want your stamped sentiment to be on the left side. Okay, so let's start to do that first. I'm gonna remove the tear and tape from this top panel. Then I'm gonna line this up so we're gonna adhere that tear and tape to the back where we have our ribbon pull coming to the right. And I'm actually going to center it from left to right but put it right up to the top edge of that section and press down, okay? Then I'm gonna fold this down, remove the tear and tape from here. Then this piece I'm gonna turn face down. Same thing, centering it from left to right, but then I'm also gonna line it up right to this bottom edge and press down. Then I'm gonna remove the tear and tape let me just point this out one more time before I glue it down. So on the top panel where we had the tear and tape on that plastic bag here on the left, we adhered the gift card panel with the back down. Then we folded this down. We adhered the sentiment panel face down with the tear and tape here. And now when we go to close this, this part's really important. You want to have this 3 eighths of an inch section between our stamped panel and the next panel. So just take your time, see if I can show you this from the edge. So we've got our stamped panel is here, then our 3 eighths of an inch section is gonna go between it. And then you wanna just take your time and line up this edge right here. Like so. Now watch what happens. Amazing, I love this. All right, so now we know that this is the front of our double slider gift card holder. Let's bring in a piece of designer series paper. This comes from Heartwarming Hugs, and this piece measures two and three eighths by three and five eighths, and I'm gonna adhere that right here to this panel. It probably would have been easier to adhere it before we put this together, but we're going with it. And then I have a piece of real red that measures one and three quarters by three that we're gonna adhere our adorable reindeer to, just like so. We're gonna pop him up on dimensionals. And then I'm gonna come in with some red rhinestone jewels and place those in all four corners for a little bit of added bling. And there is our double slider gift card holder Perfect for the holidays. I gotta turn it this way so it comes all the way in screen, but how cute is that? I used three different of the real red patterns from the heartwarming hugs. I've got three of these double slider gift card holders ready to go for the holidays. They're really gonna pack a wow. It's such a fun technique to create, and I hope that this video made it look easier than it looks. So thank you so much for joining me today. If you enjoyed this video, please give me a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel, and hit that bell icon so you don't miss my next video. If you're interested in purchasing any of the Stampin' Up! products I used today, they'll be linked in the description. And I'll also include a link to my detailed blog post with all project measurements, supplies, and details. I'd love to have you come visit me at thepaperpixie.com where I post projects every weekday to inspire you. And if you don't want to miss a thing, you can subscribe to receive blog updates via email, and you'll receive an email each time I publish a new post. You can shop with me anytime at thepaperpixie.com shop. And if you're interested in a discount on your Stampin' Up! purchases, the starter kit is the ultimate bundle, and it's a great way to fill your wish list for less. I'd love to welcome you to the Stampin' Up! family and my team of Paper Pixies. You can purchase the starter kit at thepaperpixie.com join. If you don't already have a demonstrator and you'd like a complimentary copy of our catalogs, 
You can order catalogs through me at thepaperpixie.com slash catalogs. And if you give this project a try, I'd love to see what you made. So feel free to share it on social media with the hashtag paperpixie, and I'll be sure to check it out. Thanks again for watching. I hope you have a wonderful and blessed day. Take care. Bye.